Hey, wait a minute, is what you might be thinking if you've been paying attention to mass and mass density and comparing it to probability and probability density. There are some very nice correspondences between the two if we just enforce the fact that probability mass is equal to one, the total mass of an object over the real line. If you look at this correspondence between the mass density, rho of x, and the probability density, also rho of x, then a lot of things line up really nicely. If I have a mass density over the reals, and I want to know the mass of a certain subset, a, I simply integrate the density. That's it. That's exactly what we do in probability to compute the probability that a randomly chosen point lies in a subset A. Well, does the correspondence extend? Yes, yes. If I look at the center of mass, x bar, how do you get that? You integrate x times rho of x dx. That is exactly the same thing as the mean or the expectation of your random variable. The moment of inertia capital I, about the center of mass of an object? What is that? That's the integral of the distance to the center of mass squared. Oh, wait a minute. That's exactly what we did in defining the variance, v of x. We took the distance to the expectation, squared it, integrated that with respect to density. And lastly, the radius of gyration, rg, that value that you get if you focus all the mass a certain distance away from the center of mass, what does that correspond to? Well, because the total mass is 1, that corresponds to the standard deviation. You can think of that standard deviation, the square root of the variance, as being just like a radius of gyration, the square root of i divided by m. But that total mass m is equal to 1, so there you go. It all matches up. In fact, I often think about a random variable in terms of mass, where instead of picking a random point, I think about picking a random atom given a specified mass density. If that works for you, great. That correspondence can be really helpful in terms of leveraging physical and probabilistic intuition. Let's take a minute or two and look at an example of a probability density. This is called a Pareto density. It's of the form beta times alpha to the beta divided by quantity x minus alpha to the beta plus 1. Here, alpha and beta are positive constants. And here, this is kind of important. This probability density is not on the entire reals, but rather on the right-hand side, on the region from 0 to infinity. If you want, you can just assume that this density is 0 for negative values of x. Let's look at a specific example where, say, alpha is 1 and beta is 2, so that rho of x is 2 divided by quantity x plus 1 cubed. This uh, starts off with high density, near 0, and then it very quickly plummets to very, very, very small densities. Okay, that is a specific example from this family of Pareto distributions. Now, the question we're going to consider is in this particular case, in this case where alpha is 1, beta is 2, what is the expectation? What's the mean of this random variable? Well, let's simply integrate this over the uh, region from 0 to infinity, but I have to integrate this density, rho of x, times x. When we do so, we are set up for a classic partial fractions method. You might want to go back and review integration by partial fractions a bit. I'm going to just come out and tell you that this integrand splits into 2 over quantity x plus 1 squared minus 2 over quantity x plus 1 cubed. You could do the algebra, check that if you want, and then both of these integrals are really trivial simple u subs with u equals x plus 1, du equals dx. When I integrate the first term, I get minus 2 divided by quantity x plus 1. When I integrate the second term, I get minus 2 divided by negative 2 times quantity x plus 1 squared. I need to evaluate this from 0 to infinity. In the limit, as x goes to infinity, uh, what do I get? Uh, both these terms vanish. So I simply subtract off what I get when I evaluate at 0. That is 
2, and then minus a minus a minus 1. 2 minus 1 is 1. That's it. That's our answer. What was this? Oh, right. This is the, this is the mean. This is the expectation. If I sample this over and over and over, I expect to get an average value of 1. Okay, let's keep going. What's the probability that my randomly chosen point is less than 1? That is, it's between 0 and 1. Isn't it 50%? 50% less than the mean? 50% greater than the mean? No, that's for median. This is for mean or expectation that's different. Let's do the math. Let's integrate this. What's the probability that x is between 0 and 1? It is the integral from 0 to 1 of rho of x dx. That is, the integral of 2 over quantity x plus 1 cubed. Now, that's an easy integral. We've basically just done that. That gives us 2 divided by negative 2 times quantity x plus 1 squared. When we evaluate that from 0 to 1, check it, we get 3 fourths. That means you've got a 75% chance of landing between 0 and 1 and a 25% chance of being bigger than 1. Okay, now you could you could keep on going. You could say, okay, what's the what's the variance? Ooh, there's a bit of a problem. And this is a cautionary tale. Always be careful. When integrating over infinite domains, you got to check convergence. In this case, when beta equals 2, the variance does not converge. You need a value of beta bigger than 2 for a Pareto density to have variance that converges. So be careful. Now, there are lots of other probability densities out there that are interesting. One of the best, one of the most useful, one of the ones we're going to see all over the place is the Gaussian density. The standard Gaussian on the reals is e to the minus x squared over 2 all divided by root 2 pi. This has mean 0 and standard deviation 1. A general Gaussian on the reals is a bit more complicated. If your mean is mu, your standard deviation sigma, then you take the standard formula, you replace x with quantity x minus mu, and you got to slip in a sigma squared in the denominator of the exponent and the denominator of that, that coefficient out in front. You may or may not memorize this formula. I don't know. There's so many probability densities out there. There are gamma densities and Cauchy densities and Pareto densities and all kinds of stuff. Now, you don't need to memorize all these density formulae, unless you want to become a statistician, maybe. But you do need to know that they exist. It's good to be familiar with the names, and it's good to be really familiar with Gaussians. We're going to see those guys a lot.